Hi! Today, let's talk about capacitors. Let us define first what is a capacitor. A capacitor is a device used in a variety of electric circuits, such as to tune the frequency of radio receivers, eliminate sparking in automobile ignition systems, or store short-term energy for rapid release in electronic flash units. There are several types of capacitors as shown in this figure. Let us enumerate some common types. The first common type of capacitors is the aluminum electrolytic capacitor. This is an actual example of an electrolytic capacitor. Electrolytic capacitor is the most popular type of capacitor for values greater than about 1 microfarad having one of the highest levels of capacitance for a given volume. Farad is the unit of capacitance. This type of capacitor also comes in different sizes. The bigger the size, the larger the capacitance is. The value of its capacitance is written on its body. The capacitance of this small capacitor is 4.7 microfarad. The value of the second capacitor is 470 microfarad. While the bigger capacitor has a value of 4700 microfarads. Electrolytic capacitors are also polarized, which means they can only be placed one way around in a circuit. The longer terminal is usually the positive terminal of the capacitor. There is also an indicator on its negative terminal. Let's proceed to the second most common type of capacitor, which is a ceramic capacitor. You can read the capacitance of this ceramic capacitor using the digits written on its body. In this example, the digits are 1, 0 and 4. 1 and 0 here represent the first two digits of its capacitance. The digit 4 represents the number of zeros of its capacitance. So putting them together, the capacitance of this capacitor is 100,000 picofarad. We always use the unit of picofarad when reading the values of this type of capacitor. But 100,000 picofarad is also equivalent to 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad. A ceramic capacitor uses a ceramic dielectric such as titanium acid barium. That's why it is called a ceramic capacitor. Most types of capacitors were named based on the dielectric used in their construction. But what is dielectric? A dielectric is an insulating material such as rubber, plastic, or wax paper. When a dielectric is inserted between the two plates of a capacitor, the capacitance increases. The third most common type of capacitor is a polyester capacitor or also commonly called as Mylar capacitor. This is an actual Mylar capacitor. This type of capacitor consists of metal plates with polyester film between them or a metallized film is deposited on the insulator. We can also read the capacitance of this Mylar capacitor based on the digits written on its body. The first two digits are 1 and 0 and the third digit is 4 which means we add 4 zeros on its value. So the capacitance of this capacitor is also 100,000 picofarad or 0.1 microfarad. But observe that there is also a letter on its body after the third digit, which is a letter J. This letter represents the tolerance value of its capacitance. J means its tolerance value is positive and negative 5%. If you want to know the detailed discussion on how to read the capacitance of common capacitors, I attach links on this video's description that you can visit. There are other types of capacitors, and these are tantalum capacitor, paper capacitor, variable capacitor, and a lot more. If you want to know all the types of capacitor, I pasted on this video's description some links that you can also visit. Now basically, the role of any capacitor is to store energy in the form of electrical charge. But how do we charge or store energy on this tiny capacitor? Let's find out how charging happens. I have a capacitor here and a 9 volts battery. So this battery still has plastic on it. So let's remove this first. Now how are we going to connect this battery to this capacitor? So we are going to use this battery snap connector or also called clip connector. Let us be mindful on the connections. The positive terminal of the battery should be connected to the positive terminal of the capacitor. 
Likewise, the negative terminal of the battery should be connected to the negative terminal of the capacitor. After the connection was established, the capacitor will start to charge or it will start to store energy in the form of electrical charge. If we are going to illustrate the circuit on its equivalent diagram, it will look like this. So I built the circuit using an Eagle CAD software. This is the common symbol for a capacitor. As you can see, the symbol suggests that a capacitor consists of two parallel metal plates represented by these two parallel lines. And this is the symbol for a battery. Let's go back to our question. How do we charge a capacitor? When this capacitor is connected to the battery, the negative charges on the left plate get attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery. That's because opposite charges attract. On the right plate, negative charges get repelled away from the negative terminal of the battery. That's because like charges repel. As the negative charges leave the left plate of the capacitor, the left plate becomes positively charged because it has now more positive charges than negative charges. And on the other hand, the right plate of the capacitor becomes negatively charged because it has now more negative charges than positive charges. And always remember that the two metal plates of the capacitor will have the same magnitude of electric charge but opposite in signs. So for example, if the charge on this left plate is positive 5 microcoulomb, then the charge on the right plate is negative 5 microcoulomb. This is because every electron or negative charge removed from the left plate is also the negative charge being transferred to the right plate of the capacitor. The flow of charge stops when the voltage or potential difference across the capacitor equals the voltage of the battery at which time the capacitor has its maximum charge. Even after you remove the connection of the battery, the electric charge will remain in the capacitor. The only way you can discharge the capacitor is by connecting its two terminals or by connecting a load such as a LED across its terminals. Now, not all capacitors can store the same amount of electric charge. This capacitor can store a large amount of charge compared to this capacitor. And we can know that by reading the values of their capacitance. So what is a capacitance? Capacitance is the ability of a capacitor to store energy in the form of an electrical charge. In layman's term, capacitance is just the number that simply tells us how good a capacitor can store electric charge. But how do we compute the capacitance? Mathematically, the capacitance is C equals Q over delta V, where C is the capacitance, Q is the magnitude of the charge on either conductor or plate, delta V is the magnitude of the potential difference between the conductors or plates. The SI unit of Q is Coulomb, after the French physicist Charles Augustin de Coulomb. The SI unit of delta V is Volt, after the Italian physicist Alessandro Volta. Thus, the SI unit of capacitance is Coulomb per Volt. One Coulomb per Volt is also equivalent to one Farad, or that is, one Coulomb per Volt equals one Farad. Farad is the unit of capacitance, named after the English physicist Michael Faraday. So basically we can say that 1 Farad is the capacitance of a capacitor which requires a charge of 1 Coulomb to establish a potential difference of 1 volt between its plates. Note that a Farad is very large so we will often see microfarad or picofarad as units of capacitance. It is sometimes easier to remember the formula of the capacitance using this triangle. Q or the magnitude of charge is at the top of the triangle while C or capacitance and delta V or potential difference are at the bottom. This arrangement represents the actual position of each quantity in the capacitance formula. So using this triangle, we have C equals Q over delta V, Q equals C multiplied by delta V, and delta V is equal to Q over C. Now let's try to solve a problem. For problem number one, Determine the amount of charge stored on either plate of a capacitor, which is 3 microfarad, when connected across a 12 volts battery. To solve this problem, let us first write the given values. The given values are 
c equals 3 microfarad or that is 3 times 10 raised to negative 6 farad, delta v or potential difference is equal to 12 volts. The unknown on this problem is q or the amount of charge. For the solution, we're going to use the formula which is c equals q over delta v. And from the triangle that I have showed you, q equals c multiplied by delta v. So q equals 3 times 10 raised to negative 6 farad multiplied by 12 volts. So the answer will be q equals 3.6 times 10 raised to negative 5 coulomb. We are not done yet because there is another formula for capacitance. Take note that the capacitance of a device depends on the geometric arrangement of the conductors. Also, the capacitance depends on the material used between the plates or the dielectric. Most of the parallel plate capacitors have a solid material for its dielectric such as paper, aluminum oxide, ceramic, and polyester. The formula in solving the capacitance of capacitors with solid dielectric is C equals Q over delta V. But if the dielectric used between the plates of a capacitor is air, then the value of its capacitance can be solved using the formula C equals epsilon multiplied by A divided by D, where C is capacitance in farad. The Greek letter epsilon is the absolute permittivity of free space or air with a constant value of 8.85 times 10 raised to negative 12 farad per meter. A is the area of one plate of the capacitor in meter squared and D is the distance between two plates in meter. Let's solve a problem using this formula. So for problem number 2, a parallel plate capacitor has an area A equals 2 times 10 raised to negative 4 meters squared and a plate separation D equals 1 times 10 raised to negative 3 meter. For letter A, find its capacitance. For letter B, how much charge is on the positive plate if the capacitor is connected to a 3 volts battery? To solve this problem, let us first write the given values. A or area is equal to 2 times 10 raised to negative 4 meters squared. D or the distance between the two plates is equal to 1 times 10 raised to negative 3 meter. There are two unknowns on this problem. Letter A, C or the capacitance. Letter B is Q or the amount of charge. For the solution, let us first compute for the capacitance. C is equal to epsilon times A over D. Then C is equal to 8.85 times 10 raised to negative 12 farad per meter multiplied by 2 times 10 raised to negative 4 meter squared divided by 1 times 10 raised to negative 3 meter. So the value of the capacitance is equal to 1.77 times 10 raised to negative 12 farad or 1.77 picofarad. For letter B, we're going to solve for the amount of charge. By using the basic formula for capacitance, which is C equals Q over delta V, we found that Q is equal to C times delta V. Then substituting the value of C and delta V on this formula, which is Q equals 1.77 times 10 raised to negative 12 times 3 volts, we obtain a value for the amount of charge equal to 5.31 times 10 raised to negative 12 coulomb. To check your comprehension, please try to solve these two problems. You can email me your answers here and let's see if we got the same answers. I'll respond as soon as I can. And that's it for this lesson. I hope that this tutorial helped you in understanding the topic. You can actually help me too by subscribing on this channel and sharing this video to others. Thank you and God bless you.